So YouTube, you can see the Bronco isn't in here <clears throat> um, still. It's sitting outside, actually. I mean, we did bring it home from Enid, but uh, every time I roll it in, there's just one other thing that needs to be done, and so it just hasn't happened. It's not a huge priority, but at this point, it is absolute next on the list, I think, <laughs> unless something major comes up. Uh, Kayla's bugging me about a noise of Jeep's making some kind of a squeaking noise, so I gotta, I gotta check that out, and uh, other than that, I really don't have much. I gotta get my engine stands from Enid. I was gonna do that today, but we got, you know, friggin' 400 mile an hour wind, so I don't feel like taking a 30 mile drive, you see. Nowadays, I actually have a choice whether I gotta drive that far or not. Um, wanna wish everybody a happy Christmas. Merry New Year and all that good stuff. Uh, this will be probably a week, maybe two weeks late, but all the same, I wish everybody all of that good stuff. Um, still lots of projects to go. We had, uh, it's the Christmas season, we had uh, Phil came over, Rome was here, Matt was here, um, Kayla's family all came by. We had dinner for, well, Kayla, you know, she has her handicapped aunt we have to take care of and so we had dinner for her and that was uh, that was fun and uh, even my parents stopped by which you know it was a little awkward but but you know it was nice to have them see the house anyways I I do want to maintain some kind of relationship with them it's just that it's not going to work on the ranch to try and do that you know simultaneously uh, but you know I had a good Christmas all the same um, hmm. got a bunch of new or got some new darts got a New John Deere stool, those of you who catch me up on Facebook, you'll have seen that, uh, my favoriteest present. Uh, wearing my new hat, my John Deere hat, and uh, <clears throat> got uh, that Kayla movie, uh, the trilogy, the Back, uh, Back to the Future trilogy, and a uh, self-defense game for the Kinect, and um, let's see, just had a pretty awful good Christmas. Um, so now with that over, hopefully we can get kind of back to semi-normal. Of course, New Year's is kind of a bit of a party scene for, for me and my friends. We'll be, uh, over, we'll be over here, most likely we'll be over here doing the, doing the New Year's thing at the garage. So we'll probably get some footage of that. Um, let's see, what else did we do? Got the Jeep back to Denny. Uh, whew, that's kind of... Kind of the gist of uh, kind of the gist of, of what we've had going on. Um, pretty cool. Our neighbor brought us a honey glazed ham on uh, New Year or not New Year's um, Christmas Eve. Uh, didn't expect that, so that's pretty cool. So far, you know, being in town, it's been all right. I haven't met the neighbors on that side, but I know the neighbors on that side, and then a couple houses down, I know some of those people, and I know some of the people that live behind me. Uh, Let's see, other than that, like I say, you know, uh, next major project in here is going to be going to be the brown cow. Uh, and I wanted to do a little explanation on that because I have had some questions. Um, I'm going to grab my stool. Somebody asked me how many motors have been in the brown cow. And you got to understand the brown cow is one of them kind of family affair type of deals. Family meaning uh, family being the friends you choose type of deal and it's always tossed back and forth. Roman bought the Bronco, the brown cow, originally for $600, I think if I remember right, $600 in Crosby, North Dakota, North Dakota from a guy named Lyle Jovic. Actually, I haven't talked to Lyle in years. Lyle, if you've seen my videos, uh, look me up. Uh, Roman and I have been, we've actually wondered what has happened to you for quite a while. But anyways, that's a side note. Um, Roman bought the brown cow and we knew it was missing when he first bought it. There was something wrong with the motor. Never really did figure it out. Did a little bit of work on the carb, and it was still just missing, but it wasn't, wasn't anything you could really put your thumb on. And one night we took it out, uh, four wheeling in the snow, and it just, the oil pressure dropped and it got worse. We pulled it in the shop, looked at it, parked it. One day we came back to it, Ended up pulling off the intake manifold for one reason or another. I thought maybe there might have been a leak in intake manifold because we were getting some other things going on. And found a push rods bent in the form of a Z. Uh, bent so badly that we had to straighten them out to get them out of the, uh, 
out of the, the bores, well, if you know how a head in a 400 works, you know, there's a little hole that you got to pull the push rod through, and it would not fit through that hole. Uh, so we got that fixed and actually run really good for the next two years, but the oil pressure was never right. We always knew that there was going to be something. Roman rotted the ever-loving bejeebers out of it. Uh, I mean, we all did. I, I can't just say Roman, because I used it for fencing, and we towed and hauled and rotted it and raced it, and we were really hard on that poor 400. Um, and never touched it. You know, never did a dang thing. I mean, some of you guys can look back at my videos, and you'll see some of the things we've done with it. You know, and the Bronco's been around for quite a while. Uh, I was driving it to town for an old-timers festival to be in the parade, because we've had it in the parade every year for the last four, I think we're going on five years now. And uh, I was driving it in and I started hearing a knock and the oil pressure went severely down. And uh, get into Fairview and the knock was kind of there. And by the time I got to Romans, it was knocking really bad. And we knew it was, it was pretty well done. Um, but 400 not being a terribly valuable motor, we didn't worry too much about it. Um, in the meantime, well, anyways, I drove it home, parked it, drove it around a little bit every once in a while, but uh, didn't put too much use on it after that for the next couple months. And that's about the time, if you're catching up with my videos, uh, if you watch my videos, then you'll see about the time that I got the second motor for it. And uh, that second motor, I had gotten it, we've, I'm trying to remember, we had gotten it, I think, from a derby car guy. And he let it sit outside, and it was supposed to have been good. We get it home, roll it over, or try to roll it over, and it was seized up. So ended up stripping down the old block and the block I'd gotten from the derby guy, and um, and trying to make two out of one. What I think actually happened was we ended up with a 351 crank and 400, and that motor I put together, it was kind of a rush deal. I needed a vehicle, and those of you who have seen the motor, I mean, there's a lot of things that I should have done in that video that I didn't. And I really hope to document another engine build so I can show you guys all the proper ways of, of uh, checking things uh, instead of the rush, rush, rush way. Because if I had mic things out and use plastic gauge, I probably wouldn't be having to replace the motor in it right now. Uh, long story short, or attempting to, is as long or short as my stories get, I was on my way to uh, Bismarck with it, with the new motor. It had been running good. I'd driven it about two days. The oil pressure had been doing some erratic things and I got to, I think it was either Beach or Belfield and the motor was knocking severely. So we had to shut it down, brought it home, found another motor. That would have been motor number three. Found another motor, motor number three. And uh, that motor, the guy told me it was missing. Same basic story as the first motor, and it never was quite right from the time I put it in, but it was enough to get it out of the shop, and at the time I did not have a lot of time in the shop, and so I, you know, it was, I just, I'd be pressured to keep stuff out of there, and so I, I kind of had to jump it in, throw the motor in, and get it gone, knowing that it wasn't right again, and that was one of my problems with the old shop, is it got down to a point where I couldn't do projects right, I couldn't do them well, you know, and finish them, per se. I just had to get stuff in and out, in and out, in and out, and it makes it hard to, to do a proper job of things. Anyways, so, put that motor in, it was never right, Matt needed a vehicle, so it went around to Matt, uh, the Bronco being the, uh, being the uh, community ride that it is, we'll call it, I'll try and keep it clean on YouTube. Uh, Anyway, so Matt drove it, and he was rodding on it pretty hard one day, and the mist got way worse, and it started making a really, really funny noise. It almost sounds like it's got an exhaust valve stuck open, and it's uh, putting compression out the exhaust is what it sounds like, but we're not sure. It still runs, still drives. Uh, I've driven it in and out of the shop about four times now, so we could get projects in and out. But, um, let's see... Uh, yeah, basically it's just sat here since we brought it home from Eden, and that's been two and a half weeks ago. Uh, in the meantime, I did pick up another motor for it, as you guys have seen in my videos before this, and that's the motor that's supposed to go in. Now, this motor is supposed to be a good, solid runner. Uh, I've never heard it run myself. The guy says it was running, or idling anyways. He, he says it was running good, and then he parked it, and the uh, mice get at the wires. He said he dumped some gas down the carburetor. 
and fired it up and it ran on five cylinders with the spark plugs eaten up. And so we're gonna take parts off of the one and we gotta swap it. This one came out of a, somebody had tried to wedge it in, I think a, a Ranchero GT and didn't have it in there right anyway, so it's got a car oil pan, so we gotta swap some stuff on the bottom end, and that's good, it's because we'll get to open up the bottom end and see what uh, see what things look like. Might pull off a, a main or rod cap or two and just, just see what the bearings sit like, because bearings aren't expensive. I can buy a bearing kit and throw it in there and be done with that. Uh, but that's basically the story on the, on the brown cow. Answer questions. Um, this motor that I've got sitting here will be motor number four. And I will say that it's not a fault of Ford, it's not a fault of the 400s, it's simply a fault of the usage that the Bronco has seen. The Bronco has not lived a very nice, well taken care of life. We've been pretty hard on it. It's, like I say, it's a community vehicle. Everybody drives it, everybody rods the bejeebers out of it. And the poor thing just won't die. Um, it, we were actually laughing about that just the other day because, you know, every time we've ever pulled it in the shop, We've never had to push it in the shop with something. It's always been driven in under its own power and driven out under its own power and it's never left anybody stranded. Uh, which is, I mean, the amazing thing about that, that Bronco is just that it's such a giver and uh, it'll stick around for quite a while because we all really like it. And it's good in four wheel drive and that 400 makes a fantastic towing motor, not nearly as good as my 9273 diesel the F550, which I haven't shown you guys, but uh, one of these days I'll get around to it. Roman's been driving it around and he wants to do a cold start, so uh, I'll get after him to do some videos. Uh, but anyways, so some of you guys have asked some questions about the brown cow, and like I say, um, that's about as much as I can answer here in, in voice. If you want to see more about it, check my other uh, videos. There's a lot of brown cow footage, and... Uh, a lot of fun we've had with it, but it'll be running again, hopefully within the next week, maybe two. But uh, until another video, I uh, wish you a uh, happy Christmas and a Merry New Year and all the best for everybody. Make sure to comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll, yeah, we'll see you guys in another video.